What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the second episode of the Gwent City Podcast, The Grand Master Plan. I am back with my lovely hosts. We got Gwent Town back from last week, Devil Driven back from last week, and we've got the new addition, the man himself, Manti XD. Welcome to the podcast, friend. How are you doing today? Doing very good, very good, man. Thanks a lot for having me here. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty cool to be with such a great individuals like yourselves. You're too kind, friend. You're too kind. Yeah, thank you for helping me get this all set up. Uh, Manti XD is great and uh, very helpful. But today, guys, we're going to jump right into it. We've got a very special episode of our podcast. We've just heard about the midwinter update being uh, announced from CDPR in their dev stream. What we have here is a hundred new cards coming. Spells, heroes, uh, leaders, uh, units coming for all factions. And today we've got a great set of cards revealed for you guys that uh, the devs have gone and shown us. And we're going to be going through each card and talking about them a little bit. So without further ado, we'll get started with the bronzes. Pull the first card up here on the screen. The Wyron Scale Shield. So this is a special card. Boost a unit by the base power of a bronze or silver unit in your hand. Uh, let's kick it off to Gwent Town, man. What do you what do you see about this card? What do you like? It's really interesting. Uh, I think that type of card. Um, it looks like in, on paper for a normal deck, you could say it's a really bad card because you normally wouldn't have anything that is over ten. And also boosting is pretty like weak to removal and other things. The and the thing about that card would be the synergy with certain archetypes like veterans, for example, which tend to run like very high value or a high amount of base power units. So that could be easily for a team 15 points on that bronze. And then it would be legit and you could run it. But other than that, it just looks like a normal common spell. Nothing too interesting about it at first glance. So yeah, I don't have really anything else to say. It could be interesting on veterans, not anything more uh, until now. Yeah, it seems like definitely a, uh, a more basic card uh, introduced here. Manny, what what are your thoughts on this one here? Uh, for this one, I think that, like you say, the thing on the Skellige was going to be pretty good. I, mean, I wouldn't say... it's like a little, The real reason is it's too early to tell. But what I want to point out is the tag is called Item, right? So that's going to bring a different kind of synergy. We don't know what other cards are going to be working with a such tag as Item. And that is also my open other possibilities. So if they release more, uh, let's say, Nether Realm cards that work with items, or they get extra special effects, or they bring items from the deck, it will depend on that. So basically, we're just seeing the frosting for the cake, and we're already uh, trying to guess what kind of flavor it is. But overall, a uh, bronze card that can be 10 plus, is, it's okay. All right, so Devil Man, what are, what are your opinion on these new uh, item cards? It's something that we we haven't seen quite yet, but we've uh, been leaked a few artworks and stuff. So uh, we know it's definitely a new new sort of tag that's coming along with these cards. What do you think about that? I I think they're, I think like they said, it's going to be designed more for draft mode. I don't think this these these are going to be set up for constructed. It's going to be more for something you could pick for what you pick out of the draft mode. I don't think they're going to be that good for constructed, but maybe in the other game, the other game mode, they'll be a lot better. I mean, I, I could see that. Uh, I, I will make the note that you can also buff by a silver unit in your hand. So, um, you know, maybe outside of Skellige and say like monsters or something, you can, you can have some synergy with like an Imperial Manticore or something like that. But even then, you know, you're only getting 13 value, which is, it's pretty good for a bronze, but but not great too much. Um, but yeah, I think like you guys said, pretty basic card and uh, nothing too interesting about this one. But it'll be interesting to see if people can make it work in competitive. Uh, moving right along here, we got the next card coming up. And this one is a bit interesting. We have the Peasant Militia. Now this card is a, another special card reading, Fill a Row with Peasants. Uh, Gwent's Town, man, what do you think about this fill a row thing? I mean, that kind of hints to some different mechanics that might be interested. What do you think of this? 
this this card is the the reason why everybody was freaking out about the death of Rose and whatever. We don't know yet what killer Rose can mean. If there's something I know about card games, is not always you will take the description of the card like super literally. It might just mean put five or seven tokens, and um, that is that is it. We don't know yet. That's the that's the only thing I can say. It's interesting because um, with token synergies, the amount of units you can put on the board it gets really dangerous. Like in token decks. That card playing for more than six could be super good. Just imagine it with a KSS. It's 12 points. But with two KSSs, is 18 points. Uh, with three KSSs, it would be 24 points, right? Just with six tokens. Uh, that is insane. Obviously, it puts five or six um, tokens for Jennifer. It has all other type of uh, synergies. It's also attacked. So if you want to play it in an R. You could play with Natalis. It's interesting. I think an interesting card. But in the end, uh, we don't know yet what type of effect can really be that fill a role. Or other than that, I mean, I don't think it's going to be quite literally filling a role. Like the role has a limit of units, let's say seven, and you put seven units on that role. I wouldn't think that would be that because, as I said, it would be probably too broken with tokens. So, yeah, uh, my, my whole conclusion in this card is we don't know. I know, interesting, right? Great analysis. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, I, I don't really can say any, uh, I can say anything very interesting. It's just gonna be a really uh, incognita. It's, it's something we don't know yet what can happen with that card. I yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot kind of up in the air with this card filling a row. Like we don't even know what peasants are. Uh, Manny, what do you, what do you think? Maybe this card might be trying to get at uh, with these kind of unknown factors. Sorry well, for the interruption, yeah. but uh, I just wanted to say that peasants are actually one one or like as one uh, one strength unit has been confirmed on the stream. But ah, yeah, whatever. Okay. okay. Uh, hmm. Just came to shaming. Uh, do your do your part, Monty. I'm sorry. No, all good, all good. So uh, I think that CDPR always does a really good job about uh, pairing up the artwork with what the card does. Correct. So if you see the artwork, there is three peasants right there. So as fill a row, it means that it, it might mean that you spawn a certain kind of peasant on that row. So for example, if you were to play this on melee, it will spawn certain kind of peasant to fill that row and then have that effect. So you could be a different peasant on range and a different peasant of siege. So who knows? Maybe. Uh, you know, one of those cards, one of those special cards where you actually end up filling up uh, a, necess a necessity more than a role. Hmm, yeah, that, that definitely is interesting. And we do know that they're kind of uh, redoing the whole row system in, in Gwent, uh, but again, a lot in the air uh, with that one. Devil, what do, you, what do you see as some possible uses for this card? Uh Three uh, three seed supports and just play as many as these possible, <laughs> <laughs> and then play uh, play Jermaine, and then uh, you get about 180 points, and then they play a card that uh, we're going to talk about later, and uh, it all goes away. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it just seems like it's something really. It seems like it's something really basic. Um, I, I wonder if too when we get these cards, if they're going to change the starter decks again. Um, that's that's one of the things that I'm thinking maybe they'll do as well to uh, help the players out when they first get into it because when this drops there's going to be a, I think a really big influx of players so maybe they'll change the the starter decks around and maybe one of these will get kicked in there for whatever you know maybe a northern realms or maybe monsters or something it'd be kind of weird for them to be in monsters but we'll see. Yeah, it will be interesting to see with this one. Uh, as we said, a lot unknown, but definitely has a lot of power, uh, a lot of combo potential. So this one is we'll have to keep a very close eye on, uh, as it could be really good or you know maybe just so-so. Uh, but moving on to the next card here, we've got the Northern Realms Bronze card. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It is the Winch, another tactic special card, uh, reading Spawn a Bronze Northern Realms Machine and boost it by two. Now, this fits nicely into the machine archetype, um, you know, spawning, uh, just real quick to run through that, 
is a new mechanic coming into Gwent. Uh, it's fairly, very similar to the Hearthstone uh, Discover mechanic, if you guys play that. So basically you get uh, three random options uh, from the pool, and, uh, and you get to choose one of those from that. Uh, Devil Divered, man, I see you giving the thumbs down on this. Uh, are you not a big fan of this? Is it, is it too much RNG oh. for you? No, I was thumbing down the tar stone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can be all with friends, dude. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting because it, there's been a lot of talk recently about kind of uh, Gwent maybe needing some more RNG, uh, and that would be something that that can push it more towards being, you know, Hearthstone esque. As we know, uh, that game has a ton of RNG compared to what's in Gwent now, so. I mean, what do you think about that, Devil? Do you, do you think that the game needs more RNG, like this kind of spawn mechanic, or, or do you think it's too much? Uh, I mean, you could put in, in in meme cards, you know what I mean? You just, if you don't want to play them, don't play them, you know what I mean? It, if, if somebody wants to play something consistent, you know, they'll they'll play with, you know, the cookie cutter nelf card list. If they want to, maybe, maybe they're not that good, and they need all the RNG they can help, so they need, you know, cards that'll help them out so i'm i'm okay with it. it it doesn't bother me any i mean i i, I play some of the crap cards anyway so <laughs> I'm, it's just more more tools in my toolbox so i'm okay with it so so what do we think uh Gwent's town do we think this card will be good i mean it looks pretty strong from my perspective uh summoning you know a bronze machine and then boosting it by two uh what's your take on this um i think if this card would be between very strong and completely broken uh, probably bordering completely broken, um, and at least uh, what I think about it right now. Because you can just think about uh, opening this card. Just imagine, this is a really silly opening, but whatever. And when I say it's really silly, it's very logical that it could happen in a game. But imagine your opponent was to open uh, St or Natalis into this. Then they get like a tower, for example. Let's just put the best case uh, scenario. And they get a tower for 10. And then they cancel the three towers in their deck for like around 38 points or 40. So they just played for uh, close to 60 points in two cards. So, yeah. You can think... Uh, the problem with this card would be that you can get a copy of a bronze in your deck and then just cancel out the three other copies. I think that's the strongest thing about this card. The other thing that is retarded about that card is you can play more than one copy. <laughs> so if you were to play a couple of winches uh, and pull the same unit, you could even, you know, you can have uh, more 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 chances than one if they remove uh, whatever unit you can rem uh, you want to pull with uh, Hansel. So it's like really strong in my opinion. It's probably it's probably broken at the moment. Let's see what they do because there's at least a lot of a lot of time to change it. But yeah. Yes, uh, Hansel team for two units is already insane. Hansel team for three units is already the round is over. So it's interesting. Let's see what they do. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this card almost strikes me as a, a silver card. You know, a, a lot of the times when you have these cards that pull units or, or from the deck or, or spawn them, uh, they tend to be silvers. And especially boosting it too. I mean, usually when you have bronze cards that are pulling decks, they're, they're just pulling the card from the deck. You know, not boosting it on top. So. Uh, this card is pretty insane. I mean, combos with uh, Sheila quite nicely. Uh, Devil Driven and I were talking about that. That is a ton of tempo right there. Uh, the Hensel thing, and again, you can run three of these things. I mean, you can you can pull them out with uh, with Banard Tutors. I'm pretty sure. Um, it, it's got a lot of uses. Uh, what do you think, Manti? This this card's looking strong. What are your thoughts on it? Before I give you my thoughts on it, I wanted to point out the things. First of all. Who is the person that is suggesting more RNG of Gwent? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Why are you so sadistic? Okay. Now, second of all, went to town. That strategy was for the team. Thanks a lot for spoiling it already. <laughs> it's exposed <laughs> right there. Okay. Now And now my thoughts for this card, ladies and gentlemen. This is what happens with this card. Okay. So, like you said, a lot of people are going to give the argument that if you just played a bronze that was on buff, why are you playing another bronze to begin with? But the reality of it is that having a bronze, uh, an extra unit of the ones that you already have, it has a lot of synergy. 
It has a lot of uh, working potentials with like, you know, medics, you name it. Overall, you want things on your graveyard that you can bring with Shani or others. Uh, Winch, I think, is an incredibly good card. Like, yes, you're going to get uh, RNG, but like, I don't know, you you might get rewarded for it. Uh, another thing is that City Project Red needs to be very careful as far as how much RNG they want to add into this game for the simple reason that a lot of the people that are in here, they respect the part where you diminish that RNG and try to play like a biking chase game, like my friend Double Driven likes to say. And, you know, by adding more RNG, it's just, it's just unappealing towards me. That with that being said, I think that the card is really, really good. It, it's it's interesting. I mean, uh, this one maybe not so bad on the RNG. I mean, what? There's only that's it. eight that's or it. nine. Yeah. If, you, <laughs> if you're yeah. speaking, uh, you're the yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably someone was speaking, man. I blew his mind. Did you guys see that? Like, <laughs> he's, he's, that, that's what happened. Yeah, I mean, uh, sorry about that. Uh, this one, I mean, the randomness doesn't seem too bad. I mean, what, there's only eight or nine machines that you pull from. Uh, I mean, at least so far, you know, they're, they're always adding cards all the time. But, uh, you know, the card pool that it's pulling from isn't too huge. Uh, you know, if it were something more like 20 cards that you're pulling from, then, you know, it, the RNG gets starts to get a little ridiculous. You know, it's kind of akin to, like, basketball shooting a half-court shot. You know, you're not really expecting it to go in, but, like, from time to time it will and it'll it'll save your butt so uh this one the rng not too terrible so as long as they can control it i i think it'll be okay um but yeah that's enough about the winch we're gonna move right along here uh the next card we got is the monsters bronze card revealed it is the werewolf this is a beast cursed unit seven strength uh strengthened by seven on contact with moonlight uh, something that we're not really sure about, but also another great tag to take note of is the immune tag. Uh, Gwentstown, some people have been asking for immune tags, uh, notably I think with golds, ever since the gold immunity changed uh, a few patches back. What do you think about them finally introducing this, but on a bronze card? Uh, I, just, I just wanted to point out that this is not really immunity. Like, it's not really immunity as we know it. It's just... Let's just say untargetability or whatever you're going to call it. So this card would, would be damaged. As far as I know, it would be damaged by AOE effects. It would be damaged by random pings, uh, by a, like a trebuchet or whatever. can be hit or... What is that card that they call? Reinforced trebuchet or whatever? Yeah, the random pings mm -hmm. would hit them. Um, so for that part, I think it's not like really broken. Obviously, the way, the way you want to play it is you want to play it with Moonlight. Moonlight would be, I mean, what is, uh, it suggests me that it would be a, a boon, a boon type of card, like the Ale of the Ancestors or whatever that called is called, the Barrel. Uh, so it could be something similar to that, it seems. So like a positive weather on your side that looks like it's going to be the case. And in that case, I think it would be pretty strong. 14 points for a bronze, untargetable uh, by... A, uh, normal removal is interesting, but not really. I mean, not really to game breaking because we don't see what else is going on with the deck. So, interesting card. We'll see how it goes. It's also interesting to see that actually the monsters are getting beasts. Uh, more beasts and getting more course units. Let's see how it goes. Let's see what, what more synergies can we get out of that. So, yeah, that's all my thoughts about this card. Interesting, but. I'm hoping to see what's with the moonlight. Yeah, Menti, uh, what do you what do you think possibly the moonlight could be? I think it's a pretty popular theory that it's it's one of those boon cards. Um, what do you think they they might be trying to get at with this moonlight here? I think that CDPR has a lot of options. For example, it can be kind of a weather effect, moonlight, and if they added more weather effects, kind of like that, that are not necessarily like damaging on the other side but buffing on your side i think it will be a really clever way of starting using like uh, you know first lights and overall i think it will be cool for the game uh, another option if you go into the witcher 3 and then you play then you will put a card that affects a role and like old school maradrom right so you will play maradrom on a row and the maradrom will affect every single person on that row so moonlight can be that 
Moonlight can be a weather, or Moonlight can be a like an ale card, like uh, Wintertime pointed out. It's um, it will be in it will be very important to the impact of this card to know what is Moonlight. So for that, you know, I'll just have to wait. But overall, Scorch. If this goes to plus seven and somebody has a Scorch, dude, you, they, you don't target Scorch, you know? Scorch just kills the strongest units. So it's going to be it's going to be very important to know what is Moonlight for this card. Yeah, that, that's true. Devil, what are, what are your thoughts on this one, the werewolf here? I just love it because three enforcers on the board, he just stands there like, what? <laughs> you ain't hitting me for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think it's great, man. I, I, I think it's cool they're adding positive positive weather effects and uh, something that can't be, you know, targeted like that with direct damage. I think it's pretty cool. It still can get buffed, you know, through AoE, but I just I just like that enforcers can't touch it. <laughs> it's always a positive, man. Any, anything to take uh, the spies down a notch. But, uh, all right, moving on here. We've got our next card. The Bone Talisman. This is the Skellige Bronze that was revealed. Another special card. Uh, it reads, choose one, resurrect a bronze beast, or heal an ally and strengthen it by three. Uh, Gwent to town, man. What do you see about this card? Uh, resurrecting beasts or uh, kind of the Armorsmith effect with healing and uh, getting a little bit on top of that? Oh, yeah, it's interesting that they are going for more strength and synergy on that type of deck. I think that this type of card is... It's interesting that they are trying to, to print this type of card right now. It, it definitely gives uh, versatility to Skellige. Let's see, because uh, they definitely need some more beasts to make this work, though. Because uh, the beasts they have, for example, would be Raging Berserker. So the um, Raging Berserker and the other the other bear, Savage Bear. So those are the two beasts that come to mind when I think of Skellige. The 12 is a pretty good rest. The other one is not a very good card at the moment. Let's see if he sees some changes. So yeah, it, it, I think it's a really interesting card. It's probably also going to be strong. If beasts are strong, this card will be strong because the the two options seems to be seem to be pretty decent at least. So I think the expected value, the EV is going to be high with this card. It's probably going to be uh, pretty much never that uh, unless it's the uh, round one, for example, that could be a little bit more problematic. But later in the game, I think it's going to be a really good value regardless or when you play it or against what so i think this could see competitive play in the future but we'll just have to see what the rest of the cards are looking like what do you think mancy thoughts on this one well my thoughts on this one the bone talisman is uh i really like the it boost instead of just uh what's it called giving green strength um, I mean, I'm sorry, it is strengthens instead of just boosting, that's what I meant to say. Uh, it's very important, the overall is, is safer, overall it's a better play. The Bone Talisman, it's one of those cards that has an effect on like all kind of beasts, right? So as the, as the game progresses, this card is going to become better and better because obviously you're going to have more options. So, so far so good, I think in... I think a couple of decks are already thinking of running it. You know, who are people who are like, you know trying to make decks with the options we have so far? And yeah, I think it's a good card. It's a good card, and as the game progresses, it's gonna get much much better. Devil Druid, man, what do you think about the strengthening on this card? I mean, that's always an effect uh, strengthen that's been notoriously very strong in Gwent, and you know, coupled with the fact that there's a Skellige card, it's even better. Uh, what sort of possibilities do you see with that? Um, you might still be able to use it with the the great sword deck too. I I don't know how you would fit it in there. What I'm wondering is if there's a way that you know in in the hidden cards that we haven't seen yet, if they're going to have a way to pull this special out of your deck, if they can, if there's like an herbalist that can pull this card, it's it's going to be nuts. <laughs> but uh, this, I I think it's more designed to pull the bears out and maybe. A better way to stagger them so they don't get scorched but i mean healing stuff too i mean if you got jenga and and you know big old judah you know you might be able to bring her back up but 
I, th I think it's more designed for the res purposes. Yeah, it, it's important to note too that it's uh, healing the ally instead of resetting. So you know, say you pull out a, a, a large unit that's that's boosted, um, you can strengthen them through that uh, instead of resetting. It would just heal. So uh, you can use this on boosted units and still get the plus three strength. Um, it seems like this is more of like a tech or or more of like a very specific archetype card. So. I kind of struggle to see where it fits in, in the current decks right now. Uh, I'm not too sure on this one right now. Even in the future, you know, a little shaky on it. Um, probably not that strong in my opinion. But uh, we'll, we'll see what happens as more beast gets revealed. You know, they could come out with some super strong uh, bear unit for that. And uh, we'll just have to see again, like a lot of these cards. But uh, moving on here, next we have the... Viper School Witcher. This is the Nilfgaard Bronze card, 7 strength. Deal 3 damage, increase damage dealt by 1 for each alchemy card in your initial deck. So uh, it looks like they're trying to push more of an alchemy archetype with the Nilfgaard. Uh, you already have the, the Vicavaro Novices to pull those from your decks. Um, if you include these guys, you know, that, that'd be a ton of great synergy right there. Um, you know, base 10 uh, value and only increasing with the alchemy cards in your deck. Uh, important to note that they don't even have to be in your deck when you play this, it's in your initial deck, so as long as you put those cards in the deck builder screen, you're getting the value out of that. Uh, Gwent Town Man, what do you see like the average value of this card being if you're if you're trying to build around it? I think this card is one of the examples that we shouldn't take this at all uh, seriously. Or we shouldn't uh, take these values uh, that they are showing us really as as a gospel, they they will change everything here. I think this card is way too strong at the moment. Seven points. Uh, just let's see, let's see that you're running three alchemy cards, just three uh, three Mahaka males, which are alchemies. With three novices, they are fourteen points for a play, which is pretty good. And then they will immediately make this a fourteen point play. Plus Mandrake, plus whatever uh, other alchemies they are releasing with this expansion. I don't think we will see 15 point cards with removal. Um, if you realize that card is almost as good as Leo, uh, just with this for a bronze. Uh, yeah, it, it looks to me a little bit too strong, and he will probably see uh, some value being removed from that body. He's too thick. <laughs> the Witcher is, 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 is way too thick at the moment. <laughs> Nothing else to say. It looks like a really strong card. It also looks interesting because it could open up a different archetype. But yeah, we'll see. Do you think uh, Double Driven, this card, will push the alchemy archetype over the edge? I mean, it's something they've been pushing with cards like uh, Vesemir being added and, and uh, all those new specials from the last patch. Do you think this will be enough to push like an alchemy Nilfgaard over the edge, make it you know tier 1? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, they got the, the ones that pull the spells, right? The... Uh... The novices, the yeah. The Vic of our novices. So yeah, you just you just put every alchemy card, you know, crow's eye, everything else. You throw them on the list with forty cards, and then you just pull uh, Saskia Dragonfire, and you scrap your hand, and these guys just nuke anything that comes on the board. <laughs> That's um, actually a really cool idea. I never thought of that. <laughs> forty card nilf guard. Forty card nilf guard, and then when you don't get it, what you want, you just. Pull Dragon Sask or Saskia Dragonfire and scrap them all and get a new hand. But uh, <laughs> uh, it, like like went to town said it it's it's going to be a great card. It, it it basically just negates having to run Leo. You you can you can just run three bronzes. It's the same thing with the Venendal Elite and Seer. The bronze card is better than the the silver or the the gold. With that being said, Manti, I mean, do you think that they'll kind of rework some of these cards, like a Leo or, or a Serret, that maybe these Brawn cards are, are starting to kind of take the place of? Um, or do you think it's something where CDPR want to make strong bronzes uh, in line with, you know, silvers and golds, which is something that has said they want to do in the past? What, what do you think uh, are your thoughts on that? All right. Uh, I don't think it's a replacement. I don't think it is a, a just we're rotating uh, kind of like cards. I think that is, is some part with it. I think that is a fine card. I think that the where that they're going with the cards is great. Uh, obviously, 
this is this hasn't been released yet. There is always time for change. There is always time for a change. I'm actually op very open to change. I like when people um, try to adapt and such and admit. Sometimes, let's say, there is cards that have good a good heart, like AKA Iris, right? So the idea of Iris is, for example, you play it and then the next uh, the player tries to respond it, and then from there on you get an effect. But the reality of it is that she's been played and that's it. Uh, there is no response time. That to me that is a problem. If uh, CDPR tends to change cards like that, I have no problem whatsoever. You know, it's it's there are many ways to play when, and obviously there are going to be a couple of uh, faults here and there. As far as the Viper School of Witcher goes, man, this card is really good. Like, like I'm drooling. Like, I'm drooling just to make a video about it. Like, I want to make the miniest Viper School deck you've ever seen. You know what I'm saying? Just, sw you know, slam two of those, going second, and call it a day. It's so good, dude. I, I really, really like this card. Hopefully, hopefully they will nerf it. <laughs> Hopefully they will nerf it. I'm gonna make a video before that, so uh, I'm looking forward for that. I really like the card. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. Uh, Nilfgaard already has some of you know the primo removal in the game with uh, cards like Leo, the the Imperial Enforcers, even Menno, just being able to uh, get rid of huge bodies on the board. Uh, this guy's a little cool. I think there's more of a deck building cost associated with it. You know, you have to put those alchemy cards in your deck to get the value of it, but. Uh, definitely pretty strong. I think this will find a place in some sort of uh, alchemy type list, and uh, I'm excited to see what that list will end up looking like in the future. Uh, moving on here, we've got the Half Elf Hunter. This is the Sky Atoll Bronze revealed. It is a elf spawn, a copy of this unit. Uh, pretty basic effect, um, interesting in, in sort of hand buffs strategies as it is a copy of this unit. Uh, Manti, what are your what are your thoughts on this guy, the Half Elf Hunter? What do you see this deck kind of fitting into? Okay, so the Half Hunter, uh, spawn a copy of this unit. It's kind of like, I'm not sure if it will be. Okay, so here is my 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 thoughts on it. So, you play this unit, right, and it spawns another one. I don't know if that one will spawn the third copy of uh, the bronze. Or it will be just two. Because if so, then you don't want to run the third one. Otherwise, it's going to be it's gonna be dead. You know what I'm saying? So if you have three of these on your deck and only one brings the other one, then it's just the third one is dead. You know what I'm saying? So that's my concern. If I hope not, okay? I hope that the first one doesn't spawn the second one and the second one and the third one because, dude, that's, that's a huge chain. That's a massive chain. It can be devastating, but hopefully it's just uh, the second spawn doesn't appear at the third one. Uh, Monty, I'm, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry to, to debunk your conspiracy theory, <laughs> but that card just is, uh, is a copy of itself, but it doesn't pull anything from your deck. It just spawns another copy. So, it just spawns like, because of spawn. Like, oh. dwarven, like dwarven Agitator. Yeah, yeah, it, it spawns a copy of itself, so it, it doesn't do anything with your other copies in the deck, it doesn't change anything there, you, you can run three, it's all fine. So, yeah, it doesn't think, it doesn't do anything, it, it huh. just copies. Is so it, you it doesn't uh, spawn the new discover keyword, though, or uh, do I have that mixed up with something else? Like, My, like the winch, the, the spawn keyword? We're so bad. If I understand this correctly, it should be just that you spawn another C. Well, you just spawn another half elf hunter that is not in your deck. <laughs> so theoretically, you have this two fifteen and you spawn another fifteen. That's how I read it at least, uh, and that would be the, the utilization with the card. Correct. If this would because, be, yeah. if this was if this was the case, I would think this is very strong, uh, indeed, because. The, the difference between this and the Soul Master, the Soul Master is already a decent card, but it lacks uh, some things. The, one of the things it lacks is it needs a body for your opponent. Like, your, your opponent has to play a big body if this is if your Soul Master is big, so it gets value. So, for example, the Soul Master starts as a 4, this starts as a 6. So, theoretically, the, the Soul Master is 4 plus 4, this is 6 plus 6. If you get uh, 3 buffs, imagine, with Hawker's supports, 
Uh, this would be a 15, so it would be a 15 plus another 15, which is 30 points. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, 13 plus a, uh, a 13 plus 13 damage, which is 26 points, plus your opponent has to play a unit that is as big as 13, which is very hard to do actually in a lot of decks. So it looks like a better version of the Swordmaster. That is uh, how I'm now, now trying to see this actually how it works. If it's just a spawn, like the Discover mechanic wouldn't really make sense because it says a copy of this unit. So what is there to discover? It's just a copy, right, of this unit. It's nothing to choose. So to, to me, it just looks like you buff it and then it spawns a copy, an exact copy of the unit. Yeah, but, I, I think you're right, Quentin Town. Uh, that seems to make sense. It, it's crazy too. You're you're right. It is better than the Swordmaster in that regard. That you don't need a target to damage. But I mean, this guy starts at a six, right? Where Swordmaster is a four. So automatically, that's you know four extra points of value if you're counting it as double. Uh, and you know, twelve points for a bronze isn't that bad with with no commitment. And you're putting two units on the board, so you have some synergy with say you know potions. Uh, and maybe like a like a Marauder deck or something like that, or even just okay. trying to pull something like Aileron out of the deck. I mean, that's two elves right there for for pulling her. Yeah. Also, this is this is you know what you know you know what you know what card I'm talking about. The big dragon. Lady. Yeah. Yeah. Sask, yeah. Sask. No, no, make him say the name correctly. No, no, we know what card are you talking about, dude? Yes, <laughs> I think that's how you say it. Now, whatever. Anyway, as, as I'm saying, um, this card, the only really weakness I see with it would be Dice to Scorch. You know, I mean, it has to have a counter, right? You, If you're dropping this thing for like 30 points or 27 or whatever, just have to take into account that as the Swordmaster, it has synergy with Quang. So you could do a deck that just plays Swordmaster and, and you play like this and Swordmaster for Quang. And then you could play for 16 points, which is pretty strong, even though you're getting like that investment in, I think, pretty pretty strong play. About the line with what we are seeing also for the bronzes in this expansion, we are all, all strong. But we'll see. I mean, if it works, like I said, it's just going to depend on the other hand buff cards uh, being good enough, because I think this is definitely pure material. If, if it works, like I'm saying, which is like a spawn a copy of the of the unit exactly so if it carries the buffs then it would be good depending on how the other above cards are if not i don't know I, I, I like really we can just guess with the with the description we're seeing here so yeah it seems like the bronze cards just get uh stronger and stronger each patch and uh this one is uh no exception but uh we're gonna move on here next card we're moving into the silvers here uh, the first one we're looking at is Lesser Demons. Uh, this is a 9-point neutral unit. Move a unit uh, from your deck to your hand, then discard a random card. Devil Driven, kick this one off. What are you thinking, man? I think so far this is uh, next to the one gold. Uh, this is probably the worst one. <laughs> this one's pretty bad. I, 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 don't know. I don't know if it's just me, but anytime I see the word discard, I just automatically think Skellige. It's like I don't... It, it doesn't seem like it goes with anything else but Skellige, and there's better silver cards than Skellige, so this one just... I, I love the art on it. I, I got a dog and a cat that look just like it, but uh, playing it, <laughs> it, uh, it, it doesn't uh, seem like it's going to see play at all. Yeah, I can't wait for the premium of this one either. Uh, Gwent to Town, man, what do you think about this, uh, Lesser Demons? He fell asleep. <laughs> He might be having a... That's it, dude. That, those are pretty good thoughts. Well, <laughs> well um, I'm going to have to agree with going to town right here. Uh, that, that is it. Uh, he nailed it. So, let's <laughs> thing. check this out, man. So, move a unit from your deck into your hand. Can you bring a gold? Because a gold is technically a unit. So, I don't know if you can, like, throw away something bad for something good. I think it's, you know, it's a fix-your-hand kind of kind of uh, card and I actually think that a lot of people are underappreciating it like oh, I don't know dude I think I think there is something to it because it's a also... random though it, you might lose something good by playing oh something. my god you know I agree with Wendy Town dude 
I'm out, out of words. <laughs> I actually thought like you selected what you were discard, but it's this like that? Ah, oh, I don't know, man. Skellige, maybe. You're right. And that's a maybe. I don't know. Don't like it, man. What do you think? Yeah, sorry about that, guys. We are having uh, some technical difficulties on Gwent Towns, and looks like he got uh, frozen there. Uh, yeah, I mean, this this card's interesting. I mean, it's it's a targeted tutor, right? Uh, you're moving the unit uh, from your deck to your hand, so if there's a card in your deck that you absolutely need, like, you're going to be able to find it with this one, but the, the downside just seems really bad. I mean, discard a random card. You could, you know, pick the card up that you're looking for to your hand and then just discard it right away, so... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> there's definitely a lot of risk in this one. Uh, it, it definitely might see play. I mean, you can always set it up in a situation where, you know, your your hand is just filled with garbage, so you don't really mind discarding something that bad, or if you only have bronze cards. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not too sure about this one. It is only nine points on a silver, which is pretty weak. So uh, it, it would have to be in some sort of combo deck where you really need that that one piece uh, to get going. Um, but anyway, we'll move on to the next one. I, I think everyone's pretty down on this. Um, so here we have a Silver Northern Realms unit. It is Vincent, uh, Cursed Beast. This one looks really fun. Uh, destroy the armor of all units, then boost self by half the value destroyed. Uh, went to town, it looks like, back. Sorry about those technical difficulty, guys. Um, it does happen because we are doing this live through Discord. But... Um, Devil Driven Man, we were talking about this one before the show, and we were saying this one looks like a lot of uh, power in one card. What are your thoughts on this one here? Yeah, I've been calling it the armor hag. It, uh, <laughs> it it's it's cool too because it takes everything off of the board. So it it is boots. So you know Peter can kill it pretty easy or anything else. But you drop this and they don't have the answer, man. Wow, it. It can get ugly real fast. <laughs> I love it. I think it's a great card. The art's amazing, and I, I I think it can win you round one if they don't have the answer. Manti, what do you think about this guy here? Uh, check your check your mute, Manti. Oh, there it is. Good call. Good call. <laughs> I was testing you. You passed. Um, so <laughs> I want to say that Vincent is one of those cards that I've been playing around these days. It's not that I hit armor and I misplay. It's just I've been playing around Vincent, you know, preventively. Uh, it's this card is gonna make you think about damaging armor, because overall, yes, you might be damaging a card, just roll. But like, if you don't have the can the answer for Vincent, like Devil Devil and say, Devil Devil and say, oh dude, that is, he can get big, he can. He can be so scary, dude. Just thinking about the possibilities here, uh, I think he's a really good silver card. Yeah, I mean, even just take into account that it's all units on both sides of the board. So even if, uh, you know, even though he's cutting the value in half, like, you're stealing armor from a lot of units. I mean, if you're playing against Consume and they've got Arrakis Behemoth, you know, that's extra points right there. So uh, this guy can get pretty out of control pretty quick. Uh, Gwentstown, man, what kind of deck do you see this guy fitting in? Do you like him in armor, or are you uh, thinking something a little different like that? I mean, you would play it in armor, I guess. To me, the, the card doesn't look really, really that good. I think it's, it's going to be probably not very strong unless we see some good armor cards in this patch. I think it's very weird that you're just going to have playing around 20 armor like that in your board. So this card can be an 18, which could be where I consider a decent uh, silver card. If it is lower than that, I wouldn't think, like, you just have to compare it with the frog that cycles and is normally an 18. And that's a really strong silver card. This card should be, like, an 18 or higher consistently. Uh, it's also a pretty bad top deck. Again, I don't see it being very strong, but maybe we just see the most ridiculous armor card that you just get, 20 armor. Uh, I don't know, like... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, at first glance, it does. It looks like a trap. It looks like the type of card that people just say, "Wow, it's gonna get huge." But then, you know, it disappoints. It's uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Vincent, Vincent looks really weird. Also, also everybody is getting course cards now, and <laughs> it's kind. Of, it's kind of interesting. Stealing, stealing Skial is gonna be better than ever. Just getting silvers for free. 
but other than that, we'll see what Vincent can do. I don't know. I'm not expecting much from him right now, but maybe, maybe I curse him uh, actually when I have to play against him. <laughs> I would like to add something here because it's one of those cards, like you say, this 18 points of value, but it actually enables other kind of things. You know, for example, once the units lose their armor, some of their some of them get buffed. So maybe if we add that into consideration. Because the raw math, the simple paper of him, like 18 points, like you say, this it's okay. But then you add all the three bronzes that uh, get buffed by two again. You know, it's it's okay. It's good. Yeah, I mean, maybe even you just use him for utility, uh, just destroying the armor. I mean, you know, if you've got something like a like a Siri on the other side of the board or like a villain Trent and Mirth, uh, sometimes shredding that armor can help you uh, get the damage you need to kill those things. So, uh, I mean, a lot of utility in this card. Uh, it seems like you do need a fair amount of investment, only starting at 8 points, but uh, I think it. Uh, I think there will be some decks out there that can be built to be really consistent for Vincent. But uh, again, we have to see what, what sorts of armor synergies come up with this. Um, just, to, just to get the last thought out on this card, uh, it really is going to have to be very... Like, you're going to have to get a lot of armor for it to be good. Unless you're like willing to sacrifice the heavy cavalrys, then if you were playing armor deck, I don't see you sacrificing the heavy cavalrys, right? Because they are kind of the like staple armor card, armor removing card. For a bronze, they are normally pretty strong, even at seven, uh, like they are right now. So, uh, if you were to remove those, like you, uh, each time you play Vincent, you're getting like half the value for your armor compared to the straight one-to-one -one conversion that the cavalry gives you. So. Theoretically, right? If you have tons of armor, it's gonna work. If it, if you don't, then you're just stealing armor from your other cards, if you will, right? Because the 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 heavy cavalry can also hit your opponent's cards, so it's interesting. I mean, we'll see. This card is definitely gonna be good in the armor mirror, though. Yeah, the farmer is a common deck, so he can really destroy the mirror very, very successfully. Oh yeah, it it'll be a fun game of chicken. Uh, you know. How far you build up your armor before you're too scared of uh, Vincent stripping it all off. But uh, I, I like the, the design. is pretty interesting. I like it. Um, but anyway, let's move on here uh, in the interest of time. The next card we have is Striga, a monster silver. Deal 8 damage to a non-monsters unit. I already see some shaking heads from Manti. You, you don't look too uh, pleased about this card. Ah, oh, dude, I hate that card. It's really bad. Okay, so for example, like if you if you're playing like uh, on a mirror, and then like your opponent has a bunch of monsters and such, and you're like, ah, you're just gonna start start to struggle finding the value. And like when I'm saying, you are like uh, eight plus five, and it's about average silver. It's uh, I don't know. I really don't like it. I don't like that. Is uh, almost about average silver plus something uh, non-monster. So, I don't know. I don't like it. Devil Driven, man. What are, your, what are your thoughts on this guy? It's it's 50 scraps. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. Let's, let's put our heads together. There's got to be some use for this card out here. Uh, it, it does 8 damage. I mean... <sighs> It, it it can kill a it can kill a farseer. I mean, if you're going up against thing, but if it hasn't been buffed, I mean, that's like, that's your best case scenario for it, you know. But other than that, like he said, if it's a monster card, or it, it there's just better silvers. Monster just has way better silvers. It's fifty scraps. You think so, Gwent Town? I'll give him thirty scraps. I I think uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, a damage is an interesting amount of damage. It's definitely a lot of damage. If you if you think about uh, School of the Viper, like the Witcher, Witcher School of the Viper or Viper School Witcher, whatever it's called, you want to know how that card is going to look when it gets to the real game. It's probably going to be a five that deals eight. So <laughs> if you want to realize how uh, this card kind of pales in comparison to that, you can just look at it. I don't know. It doesn't look to be the strongest card. Now, I mean, it's not super horrible. It looks like a type of a, uh, like a basic card to me. Their limitation is kind of random, maybe. 
or someone that is more savvy in Witcher topics actually knows that why the Striga doesn't hit monsters. I don't know. I, it just looks to me like this card is kind of limited for no reason because he wouldn't be even that strong if he hit monster units anyway. But I mean, it's, it's just all about numbers, really. Like two two points here, two points there could make this yoke of a card into a really good card. So uh, maybe when the game comes out, this is not a five deals eight; it's a seven deals ten. Who, who, uh, whoever knows, right? So as, as with the form that it is like this, uh, five. Plus eight is not. It's not the greatest card. It looks like a a little bit stronger death mode if it hits for the damage, but n really death mode is more for the versatility. Yeah, not great. Just just as a uh, a nice little thought experiment. I mean, with the kind of drawback that you can't hit monsters units, how much damage do you think this thing would need to do at five strength uh, in order to be you know a really competitive card? Do you guys think 10? I mean, 12? What, what do you guys think? Just open the floor. You mean, you mean the strength of the card? No, the damage. Or the, dam the damage. Yeah. I actually think that that's the key. I think that that's the key. If you put too much damage, you just get more. But if you balance a, a card with a uh, good amount of strength and more bad, more damage, I think they will have to tweak both numbers in order for us to value it like that. Because, for example, uh, I don't know. I would. I would just uh, how it is. I think I would add two strength to it. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I think in in general, uh, strength probably is more reliable. But it, it'd be interesting to see maybe like a high damaging card. Like you know, there's thunder out there, which which deals seven. But uh, there's nothing out there that deals too much more than that. You know, ten plus damage in a card. Um, there I would like to see maybe the striker be the the problem with the striker being twelve damage, which is what I think it should be if you keep the body at, at five. Uh, is that there's already a silver card that deals twelve damage, which admittedly doesn't get much play, but True. there there is the that is the, the option in the game. So the thing is balancing through damage. You have to balance more than points because just straight damage is not really that good. Normally, because you just uh, need for the target uh, uh, to be on the board, and most snowball units are normally not higher than eight anyway. So, you hit. Uh, there will be the games where, theoretically, like for you, you need to play this in an enforcer. If you play it on an enforcer or a six-point card uh, snowball effect, you know what I mean. There's more than one in the game. Uh, you will play it for eleven tempo already, plus. You obviously prevent a lot of damage from that card, but in terms of tempo, it's only 11. If it was a 7, it's obviously 2 more, which is a lot in terms of tempo in the first place. So, it's, it, basically, for each point you're taking away from it, you have to add like 2 points of damage for me. So, if, if I think the card needs 2 points more in strength, I think the equivalent would be like 4 points of damage at least to make it as good. So, a 5 deal. 12 would be interesting for me. Either that or a 7, a seven delayed, I think, would be um, optimal, probably. But again, this is just a lot of speculation. Whoever knows. I think you're right, though. Uh, I think you're right, just the nature of Gwent. Uh, it, it does tend to be better to have proactive points, uh, just because of the nature of one card per turn and, and, and the dynamics between you know going first and having the last say. So, uh, yeah, if, if you have more of a reactive ability, then I think that inherently needs to be just a bit stronger than, you know, something proactive um, in order to kind of balance out that dynamic between having the last say. But Striga, who knows? Hopefully they'll tweak the numbers before it gets out. Probably won't see much play uh, unless that happens. Uh, moving on here, the next card we have is... Milan, uh five point elf, deal four damage to the units at the end of the row. So uh a nice little card where positioning tends to matter here. Um what are your thoughts on this going to town? For for me this gets the the award from we're the of the of the expansion right now. I really don't know where to like really Hey, I value 80 card, I guess it's a 17 if you hit perfectly. It would deal 12 damage plus the 5 point body. Again, just, just looks like a 
another type of striker card, I don't know, it looks like there's too much things you have to do for the card to be normal value. It doesn't strike me as a very strong card. Obviously, if you see many decks that play Mahakamel or that type of uh, mechanic where you have to have units on every row, maybe it is good, but at the moment I just don't feel like it is, is worth it enough. Again, just a couple of points here and there could really change that uh, easily. So. I don't know. As of now, I don't really see much uses for it. Maybe I'm wrong, and it's actually a super good card. But now, the the point ceiling is good, but I don't think this card is way too way too much uh, conditions for for it to be even decent. Uh, re real quick, just to clarify, does it hit the unit on the end of each of the three rows, or is it? Are you picking one row and you're hitting both the unit to the far left and the far right? Ha has that been confirmed? Do we know? Not that I know of, and that's that's why my opinion on this card is going to be like neutral because I really don't know how this card works, and I can pretend it do, like you know, kind of how I did with the half L hunter, but uh, I got exposed <laughs> really quick, so that didn't work for me. This one, I'm just gonna say I don't have enough information of how the effect works in order for me to do a smart uh, assessment of the card. I don't know. Just me using the less common of the senses, which is the common sense. I'm gonna say it probably doesn't delay damage for per row. That would probably be a little bit too strong. <laughs> so I and mean, you don't even know if that is like it hits your units as well. It just says units. It doesn't say enemy units. Yeah, maybe this card is just like a, I don't know. It's just like an atomic bomb, dude. It destroys <laughs> the world. <laughs> <laughs> that might so. that might actually be pretty cool then because you can set up a really big swing by you know putting all your weenies on the end of your board and uh you know maybe your opponent not playing around it because I, I just from how i was reading it i was assuming it was you pick one row and then it damages you know the guys to the far left and the far right but i mean in that case it's just like a worse strike isn't it you know five deal maybe eight uh but i i, I don't know again it they should maybe work to making these uh, descriptions a bit more clear, but it's it's hard without uh, without really seeing it in action. Devil, what do you what do you think about Milane? Do you think it has a place at all on any sort of a Sky Tall deck, or do you think it's just kind of trash? Maybe maybe there's a self wounding Skellige or uh, Skoyatel list coming out. We don't know. About. <laughs> so, no, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, no, I don't. I don't know about this one either, man. It, the way it, the way it reads, I don't know if you get to pick that row or if it's if you drop it in melee, it damages melee or whatever. But even still, it's just there's better there's better silvers in in Squiatel to pick than this one. I, I I think it's another one that's just fifty scraps. <laughs> it, there's yeah. like twelve different ways to look at this text, but I think uh, regardless, it, it doesn't look too good for me. Uh, to me, uh, now that I look at it again, looks like it's only gonna be one row. Probably the the leftmost and the rightmost units on that row. So you your opponent would need to have two units on the row with more than four power, and could play for thirteen, which doesn't make much sense. It looks way too weak. So I don't know. We'll just see with this card. Maybe the end of the row is actually some code word for like the three units at the end, or <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's too hard to tell. I'm just gonna say that if it is like a 13 point point damage, uh, it's not good. If it is like a pyrotechnician type of effect, in which it deals like four damage to the end of the row of each row, it's also not good because pyrotechnician is almost as good with one less damage for a bronze. I don't know. In this unit, does does look good and right now, and maybe I'm I'm wrong and it works in another way. I don't know. All uh, right. So what I got from there is that he doesn't know. <laughs> I mean, a lot of mechanics are changing, so until we we know for sure what those are, it, you know, it could be anything. But I think even in the best case scenario of what we thought it might be, it's still kind of you know, meh. Um, but we'll have to wait for those official announcements on how those row uh, kind of uh, dynamics are changing. But anyway, for now, somewhat forgettable card. Uh, next we have. Uh, Darren, uh, Cursed Skellige unit, 5 strength. Uh, whenever an enemy is damaged, boost this unit by 1. Uh, Gwen's Town, why don't you kick this one off? How you feeling about Darren? Interesting card, Darren, for sure. <laughs> it just looks like, uh, or 
or mates, the Axemen, who were lacking a finisher. So, Daron was he's like there to fill that void, I guess. It is a cursed unit. There is a certain old goal that we are going to look uh, in a second that has to do with cursed units. There is already a silver in the game that pulls cursed units. It's interesting. This card can get really ridiculous on an Axemen deck because you normally have multiple procs. Just as, as a rough estimation, I think it's not very insane to think that you're going to get at least 20 times uh, to damage a unit in a normal game of uh, Axemen Skellige. So this card is probably like a 25, uh, which is boosted, of course, and is easily targetable to removal, which is also the case with Axemen and other cards in that deck already, so the removal should be kind of exhausted. So, for that type of deck, if, the, if really there is an, uh, an archetype that can actually use it, I think this card is actually very good. It's very needed too, because they normally, in the short rounds, they are like really, they are really lackluster. They cannot act uh, that punch, you know, the punch to push them over the edge in that short round. So, interesting. The round looks like a, like a strong card um, at first glance for me. We'll see really if the Axemans have any future or any type of damaging archetype source skill again. Also very good with Harald, sorry. Um, like Harald is 1, 2, 3, around 5 procs, I think, immediately. And mm -hmm. then and then it would be 1 per turn, so that, that's insane, actually. That, that could get really insane. So, it's interesting. Interesting card. Of course, it doesn't matter if it is like a 50-point card that everybody removes it. But, to me, it looks strong. It is, it's going to be definitely a very, very strong card and when it comes to and having a finisher for that type of deck. So, what do you think, Nancy? Dude, I think that this card is really fucking good. I'm sorry, keeping it PG 13. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's really, really good. Uh, so, what happens is this check this out. Um, you're going to be playing as a skeleton, right? And sometimes you go long rounds. The problem with going a long round now is that at the end of the third round, you're going to have to deal with Aaron. If you fought against this Kalagas Storm and somehow you end up winning at the end of like eight turns, well, Darren is going to be massive. Not just with uh, Birna Bram, but like he said, uh, with uh, the leader. Dude, this can get crazy good. And then if you at the end like have two Axemen, right? You have answers for one. And then after that, you do like, um, what's it called? Sort of double cross. You still buff Darren even more, and even if, he, if he's not on the deck, if he's not on your hand, it's great, because then you just bring it directly from the deck. It's a huge swing at the end. Like, it's a huge swing, and it's going to completely change how you're going to play against Axeman, because you cannot just go a long amount of rounds. It's, we have to find an answer for that. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Manti, but isn't he getting boosted only when uh, he's on the board? Uh, Darren. I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't say. If it says, uh, what's it called? Boost by one. Like I'm assuming that it gets boost. Like I'm reading how it is. Whenever an enemy damage is boost, boost by one. Uh, damage boosts this unit by one. I'm assuming that that is everywhere. It doesn't say whenever this unit is on the board or on the field. It just simply says whenever an enemy is damaged, boost this unit by one. And I'm sure that went to town was uh, thinking about it like that. Yeah, ob obviously, again, using the less common of the senses, if you would just play this for five at the start of the turn, hope that doesn't, somehow your opponent is ignoring it, like 20 turns straight, and it slowly but surely builds into a 15-point card. That would be kind of hilarious. But I think the whenever keyword also just kind of, and you know, without being ironic, just tells us that it's probably just going to stack uh, in your hand. I mean, that could be... The Spectre theme for me right now. This card's pretty crazy if it's getting boosted anywhere, though. I mean, it's it's got the ability to get consistently pulled out, you know, being cursed and also being, uh, being, um, you know, Alzer's Al Double Cross once it's boosted up. Uh, I was kind of reading this card as maybe just like another Axeman in your deck, um, in which case I wouldn't be too impressed. But if if yeah. it's getting boosted whenever, man, that this card is insane. I mean, it's really not that hard to get, what, like 30 instances of damage over the course of a game, you know, if your deck is, is built that way. So, like, I don't know, man. Axeman could be tier 1 if this guy is, is how you guys say. What do, what do you guys know. think about that? At some point, just it doesn't even matter 
if you use a 25 or a 35? It's just do you have the answer or not? I don't know. It, this guy just gets killed by a Mardrum. It, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's the same type of thing, right? If if somehow Axman is not the deck that I could actually expect from to to have a last play, they are normally kind of slow on the build-up and you can buy a pass against them easily. So, if you don't have a last play, your opponent will keep the answer for this card. If he, if it works like we, like we are saying, if it doesn't, then it's like a really bad card. The problem with, like, like even if it was anywhere on the board, like if you have it on the board, anywhere on the board, whenever you hit, it boosts. Like an Axeman, like the past Axeman, it's still a 5 that can get immediately killed. And then, like, resting that 5 is hard as hell. You need 3 for restore. There's not, like, 20 frays you can pull. So, I mean, just by normal, like, just looking at the power level, it would make sense that it is anywhere on the deck. Because it doesn't say in the hand, so it, it has to be anywhere on the deck, I think. And, or, like, uh, whenever it is. Like, whatever it is, it's, past, uh, it's boosting. Obviously, I think not in the graveyard, right? It, w it wouldn't make sense. They kept boosting in the graveyard to 40, and then you play with last card. It would be hilarious. But uh, I think anywhere on the deck, definitely. So, yeah. What do you think, Devil? How, do you, how are you liking uh, Darren? Uh, if it's how they... If the if it's how they're reading it, I was reading it. I was reading it probably how you were reading it, but uh, I just hope they make this one with they like putting those Easter eggs in. I just hope this one is just going not like this, not like this, because <laughs> you're either gonna have the answer and and your opponent's gonna be not like this, or they're not gonna have the answer and you're you're gonna win. So it's definitely gonna be a uh, an all or nothing. I think that's how I would feel if the card was like that, because, man, that, that seems strong. I mean, yeah, it's it's easy to answer with a Scorch or something, but if you're Scorching this guy, then, you know, you've got three, four Axemen that you're playing that aren't getting hit with that Scorch. So uh, if it's how you guys say, I mean, I think this card could be busted. Just put Axemen Tier 1 instantly, but it, it's hard to say, you know. It, it really depends on what sorts of removals out there, and... Uh, you know, once we get to Geralt Yarden, uh, then we'll see maybe maybe removal is not so uh, hard to come by. But uh, anyway, move on to the uh, last silver card that we have here from the bunch. This one is the Cadaverine Venom. I think I said that one right. Uh, Nilfgaard, another alchemy card added to that for your uh, Viper School Witcher uh, item. Uh, choose one, deal two damage to an enemy and all units that share its category. So uh, the tags of the card. Or you can destroy a bronze or silver neutral unit. Uh, kind of interesting tech card here, Devil Driven. What are your thoughts on this bad boy here? Uh, it's 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 gonna feel really good to banish a troll though, or it, it's it's, or if you play a long round, because I mean you're basically gonna be. I, I don't know if you would play this by yourself. You'd probably be playing it with Vesemir. So it's either gonna be, you know, wipe a card out of the game that's maybe your opponent's, you know, big heavy hitter like uh, Jenga Fret or something. Or it's basically gold Lambert in a bottle where you just throw it out there and it just vomits out a whole bunch of twos on, you know, damage. But uh, it, it it's another option for Vesemir. That's the only way I look at it, really. So you got to be careful because it's, it's only a neutral unit that it can destroy. So, uh, you know, we don't want you getting on, you know, the, the great dandelion show with, oh, the, with a nice man. fail or something. Well, me and Manny <laughs> are going to be on there here pretty soon with a fail, so... <laughs> I guarantee it. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, to, thanks to the necromancy, but uh, that sucks then, man. I didn't see the neutral part of it. That uh, that kind of knocks it down a peg then. Yeah, Devil Drubin was already sending shit to the Shadow Realm. It was like, oh, this troll <laughs> one. <laughs> I, I hate Trollolo so much because when he gets res again, I'm like, he, he just got a whole ton of armor off him, and now he does it again. I'm like, no, but I oh, yeah, no, I it just instantly just got, it just killed my dream on that one. So yeah, this yeah, one's yeah. about 50, 50 scraps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the devil dream was like fuck, fuck Darren, dude. When you can just remove them, <laughs> remove it to the shadow room. <laughs> 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 oh, that was great. I mean, how much yeah, value yeah. do you, do you guys see this card getting realistically? I mean, two damage to an enemy and and all of them that share its categories. I mean, like, what if a what if a card has multiple categories? Like, you're up against Skellige, and you've got you know cursed, and you've got the beasts from from the bear. 
Uh, how do you guys see that working out? Uh, Gwent Town, what do you think? I have absolutely no clue how this car works, and I'm not going to try to hide it. That's the theme of the night, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> uh, Welcome. This is the best podcast we've ever heard, guys. We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> And that's that's the face that's the face of of a competitive player right here. I don't know how this car works. If categories is just attack like soldier, then it looks strong to me. But if it is like like uh, resilient or um, whatever else, it's not gonna be or immune. Then it's not good. I think uh, or death wish. It, uh, if it is like that, I don't think it's very strong. If it is like beast or soldier type of stuff, I think then it will, it would probably be a normal car. Decent car. But it's kind of, I don't know. It will also depend on how many bronze or neutral silvers are going to be run. You don't see neutral silvers at all, or bronze silver, or, or neutral uh, bronzes. It's going to be, I don't know, maybe a little bit clunky getting the value. But again, that, this car can probably be tutored out by like first and stuff, so it's, it's, I don't think it will be a horrible car. It will be probably kind of clunky though. Yeah, doesn't seem too strong to me at first glance, but maybe I'm wrong. What do you think, Manti? Are you throwing this in your uh, your alchemy deck for Nilfgaard? I I actually no, even like that I wouldn't because there's a chance that you're gonna top deck this, right? You top deck this, what you do? Like <laughs> it's you know in the arms of the angel at that point, you know. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> I will have to see it. <laughs> have to see it uh, on play in order to, for me to give uh, my thoughts on it. Uh, I, you know, if one of our spectators has, has a great idea and you make sure you put it on the comment section, you guys are always welcome to join this uh, conversation. Uh, I'm going to pass on this one, dude. I'm out. All right. I mean, I, I see some potential. Uh, the, the dealing two to, to the enemies in all its categories, I mean... You can get a lot of value for that if you're, you know, if you're up against like monsters or something where those cards tend to have a lot of tags. Um, but I'm not too big on destroying just a neutral unit. Uh, I don't see a lot of value there. So it, it seems like it could be good as like an end of a round card, getting a lot of value. Um, but again, like you guys said, it's a bad top deck. So it, you know, I could go either way. It, it depends what sorts of uh, archetypes are really strong in the the meta. You know, something like Machines is really good, then this thing can, can probably easy get 20 value against a Machine deck uh, if you time it right. But it, it all depends on what's strong out there in the metas and things like that. So uh, we'll have to see with that one. But anyway, ladies and gents, we are moving on now to the big bad cards of the bunch, what everyone has been waiting for, the Golds. Uh, let's start with maybe uh, one of the more controversial cards released in the bunch, and that is the... Ice and Grim Outlaw, here we go, is spawn a silver special card or spawn a silver sky tall unit. Uh, again, touching back on that, uh, you know, uh, conversation we were having about the RNG in the game with spawn being the new kind of discover effect, uh, choose one of three random. Uh, this card can, can definitely make for a lot of interesting and spicy plays. Uh, Devil Driven, I know you're a fan of, of some of the more wacky uh, kind of random cards out there. How, how do you think about Ice and Grim Outlaw? Do you think it's too far, or, or do you think it's uh, an okay sort of randomness? Uh, Scoia'tael does have some pretty bad silver cards. <laughs> I mean, you could I love Molina, but man, she's not very good. You could be choosing from Alleran. I mean, it, it uh, Elias, I mean, there's a lot of bad silvers you could be pulling. You can end up pulling a spy if you need it, I guess. It doesn't say disloyal, right? So it just it it that's that's the way it works, right? You, it just picks three random cards from Scoidel's pool, or is it from your deck? No, I think it's from uh, all the the cards in the game that are uh, silver Scoidel. Yeah, I mean it it could pull some bad ones. It 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 could pull some good ones. It, it I mean silvers. Silver special or special silver special card. They only have nature's gift. Uh, I think the specials neutrals are included too. Um, oh, oh yeah. I heard okay. some people talking that... about pulling scorch from this, which would be kind of insane. But uh... yeah, I, I I was a little bit more keen on it until I realized that that's what it meant. So it's uh, 
I, I don't like I said. Scoia has got some pretty bad silver cards that they have some great ones. I mean, if you if you're if they synergize with your deck, but you can end up pulling some some turds out of there with that you don't really <laughs> want. But I, I, it, it'll be fun to play. I'll definitely be playing it for sure. How you feeling about this one, Manti? I know you're pretty down on the RNG. This probably <laughs> this probably hits the sore spot for you. I'm just I'm just no, I'm trying to think. Okay, so like, how can you like do the RNG? And I'm uh, to this degree, it's I guess it's all right because I don't know how to value the strength of a card based on RNG. So you have three strength, right? And a lot of the special silver cards are weathers, right? So there is a fair chance that you will have one. Oh, you can get a spy. What about if you get like decoy and there is nothing on the fo on the field? Then that the ah, dude, it's just so many possibilities, dude. Like yeah. I, I, I'll tell you something that that is gonna have fantastic Dandelion's highlights, amazing. <laughs> like it's gonna be there like every week. But <laughs> besides that, I'm not so sure if it's gonna have as much competitive uh, play as you know we like to see. You know, um, that's where I'm more most interested on the competitive side and the latter. So I don't know. I will have to see this an option and then. I still, it was going to be pretty hard to overcome consistency. I mean, what do you think, Gwentstown? Break it down for us. How how much value do you see uh, being kind of average for this card, uh, considering, you know, all the weathers, <laughs> the, the scorch, the different uh, kind of tutor cards there, like, like uh, marching orders and things like that? How much do you see this getting on average? Is it enough to see play in a competitive setting? I don't know. I want to... I wanna, um... Uh, introduce you guys to a card, to gold card. Uh, it's called John Natalis. So that card is a six-point card that thinks one silver out of your deck and plays it basically. So that is normally what I would consider a broken gold card in the game right now. That's uh, six points plus a silver spell, uh, which you already put in the deck because it's fucking broken. Uh, so uh, then that's a really strong card. This uh, normally a three-point card. Uh, and and then you have to like, hopefully get a playable card of the, the cards that you're shown, which in Scoyatel, as you guys very brilliantly explained already, they have a lot of bad options. Early and Malina, there is many bad ones. There are Barclays without Barclay Elves without uh, dwarfs in your deck. There's like tons of bad situations for it. There's also some good ones. But again, this is a gold card. Yes, you could compare it with cards like Gills, with Thing and, Sh and Kutor and do everything at once. You can compare it with Royal Decree, which already search searches for a gold and, and plays for plus two. You can compare it with many things. In the end, I think uh, probably uh, Eastern Grim. Outlaw, sadly, is going to be a very underused card in competitive. If it is how we are seeing it right now, as a discovered type of mechanic and random things, and else, it just looks very bad. It just looks like it would not be worth it. But at the at the same time, yeah, yeah, it's just sad for the poor Ethan Grimm that he had to be printed like this. Kind of embarrassing. He's looking so chill with that fucking stick <laughs> in his hand. He's like, yeah, and this is what I'm doing now, just pulling random specials. He's like, really, bro? Oh. This is what you give me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. A year ago, I was playing for 50 points, and now I'm pulling random specials. I'm pulling <laughs> just Malina. I'm just, I'm just picturing Ethan Grimm, like shouting, Malina, come, come out, you bitch. <laughs> yeah, like, and now it's what I do, just pull uh, under average cards from my, from my master. Oh, yeah, just, a, just a sad card. I, uh, poor Ethan Grimm didn't deserve this. They should give that that facial expression to Vanilla Gerald because that's his only job anymore is the buff spotters. So. Oh, <laughs> I, I was gonna say, shoot, let me do your let me do your job right here. Devil Driven, tell us how many scraps is this for? <laughs> oh boy. Oh, let's let's look it up here. What are uh, what are Gold's scraps? What is it, 100, I think, when you scrap it? It's, or 200? 200. 200, 200. If you hit that premium, though, man, that's... uh. <laughs> Set. You get another... another <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks uh, Isengrim. You're the best. Uh, that's like four strikers of value right there. <laughs> <laughs> Rate this card four strikers out of five. <laughs> I tell you what, man. I hope you guys are right that this card is 
ends up being as bad as you say it is. Because, man, if this card is good, it's going to piss me off so bad. I mean, this this is kind of the RNG that I'm not really looking forward to being in Gwent in the future. Uh, first of all, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you're always pulling the silver special card. Just because, in general, I think they're way better than the silver Sky Tall units. Um, you know, Devil Druid said there's a lot of bad ones in there, but... I mean, first of all, there's already, you know, 20 silver specials out there, I think, roughly. Uh, so that's a pretty big card pool that you're you're pulling from to start with. And, you know, as more specials get added to the game, you know, we just saw um, uh, CDPR adding a lot of special bronzes. I mean, I'm sure silvers are not too far behind. But that card pool is going to get bigger and bigger, and it's going to end up creating a lot more variance in what this thing pulls. And then after that, I mean, it's one of those cards where you're spawning a card. So it... It, I think, lowers the skill ceiling in a, in a sense that you can't really play around this card, I mean, you know. With this card, I mean, y you can end up having to play against, you know, three, four Scorches in a deck if you if you run your, your Silver Scorch, you know, you run this card, maybe you renew it. It gets a little crazy to that point where, you know, first of all, you're kind of just hoping to get that maybe, you know, three out of 20, you know, to, to get the Scorch that you want. And then the player on the other side, he can't really play around it because you're just spawning this out of nowhere. And it's it gets a little ridiculous. You can't really play around a 1 in 20 situation. So I think this card, if it sees competitive play, it, you'll hear a lot of a lot of uh, complaints about it because it just it's just kind of that RNG that I think really shouldn't be in Gwent, that I personally don't want to see in Gwent. It's just kind of maybe a little over the top. There's, there's going to be this... This, the type of games where he just plays a silver special card, and there, there's going to be the games where he plays Yaven. <laughs> that, because that's the, that's the type of spoiled unit you like to get, right? You get double spy, and suddenly you look like a genius, if, especially if you're bleeding. You get too much card advantage and stuff. So yeah, I could see it. You could also get summoning circle, which is kind of like a spy. So it is interesting. Like it's an interesting. You have interesting uses, but at the same time. This doesn't change my opinion on him. I don't think he's so great. He's gonna be... I think he's gonna be beamy enough that you wouldn't play it. A la... Ablak, the sage of memes. Yeah, my I mean... Fear, sorry, my go ahead. My biggest for this, fear for this card is this. There's gonna be a tournament where somebody brings this. And he's gonna get a Pog champ right there, dude. And then from there on, you're not gonna see anything else on ladder but that. Dude, that that can get out of hand so quick. Great poggers. <laughs> this card, is, this card is very poggers. Sometimes it's just gonna, it's gonna play commander song for you for twenty three, and it's still a worse Natalis, but Natalis is very strong. The twenty three point gold is still great, man. I mean, that that's pretty big right there. I mean, it. I just feel like it's one of those cards where like, no matter what the outcome is, someone's gonna be upset. You know, either you you pull the clutch scorch. You know, right when you need it to, to win you the game, and the other guy, and you're you're you know static, but the other guy is just like, come on, man, like RNG again, or you're gonna you know pull the silver sky tall unit, and you're gonna get you know Melina Yarpin on round three and a uh, Aileron, and you're just gonna be like, fuck, man, lost the game for that. Hey, I I just think it's one of those cards where you know someone's always gonna have a bad day with it, and it feels like it'll be me more often than not. <laughs> <laughs> Go for another card. Anyway, anyway, that that's enough of that one. Uh, hopefully that one never sees play, but... Uh, moving on, we got kind of a cool new mechanic coming here with Seltkirk, the uh, Northern Realms gold that was revealed. Duel an enemy, uh, deploy gain 3 armor. Now, how duel works, as I understand it, is the, the unit that's dueling first deals damage to another unit. So Seltkirk will deal his 7 damage to another unit. And then that unit, however much strength it has left, so let's say you use it on a, a Geralt, a vanilla Geralt, he's got 13, deals 7 damage, then the remaining strength that he has, he deals to Selkirk. So he would deal 6 back to Selkirk. Um, so that's how it works, as I understand. It's definitely a cool new mechanic that's that's going in there. That's interesting. Uh, what do you think about this one, Gwent's Town? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it... Is it like you're saying so you you should try to hit a seven so you do hit a seven like play your seven hit a seven 14 damage like 14 points yeah and and if that unit survives uh however much strength it has left over it'll deal to Selkirk. 
Is this card even strong? Mm -mm. I I I don't I don't think like the the thing is I don't think that's how dual really works. I don't know how it really works, but I think it's not like uh, it's not exactly like that. Because I saw some uh, some comments from someone like saying that you should hit something between seven and thirteen or something like that. I don't know. It doesn't look like it would be very good if if that is how it works. I'm sorry, I'm not being I'm not being very constructive here, but <laughs> <laughs> if it's just. Um, Someone made a chart that shows how the, what what strength values get the best results out of it on Reddit. I don't I don't know if Shu can find it and put it up there later on, but it uh, it it has like a chart that shows how what it's gonna do good against and what it's gonna drop off at. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I can look that up real quick. Okay. So well, in the meanwhile, uh, I have literally nothing interesting to say about this card. Meanwhile, I don't know what it does, but. No, now, now for real, I don't really know if the armor is gonna is meant to be used before the hit actually happens to it. So if he has armor, it's gonna be better, I guess. He has three armor. Yeah, yeah. yeah what I mean is the armor, I guess, counts before the the retaliation or whatever on the right. or the other. Car, he, right? he 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 swings first. He's he's sucker punching him basically. <laughs> it's like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> wake up. <laughs> but check this out. This is this is something pretty uh, pretty cool. It says deploy, gain three armor. The duel, an enemy is not within the deploy. So I wonder if you the, you can do like after or not run after, and you can just buff this card. But still, that sounds so fishy to me because think about it. It's like a bad icing cream, like. Technically, Isengrim is dueling everybody. It's just wrecking them, though. You know what I'm saying? So, and then you get an extra buff on all your on all your uh, elves. So, if you th see it like that, I think Isengrim is much better in in that aspect. Obviously, not the Rams doesn't have an Isengrim, and this will be like their answer. But I don't know. I think your is. Think it, I think a, Yorbeth a, is what you're uh, talking about, I, right? Yes, I uh, Yorbeth. Yes, you're right. You know, okay, all okay. the elves. I, I, oh, I yeah. was about I was I was about to say Mandy, I'm totally not following what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> uh, But uh overall I'm going to craft it and I'm gonna craft it premium because it's the best premium I've seen. Uh, yeah. that, that I premium think, I think they delicious. needed to make it doing that Connor McGregor walk. Oh he does that like thing when he walks after he knocks <laughs> someone out. That's what he should be doing. Because <laughs> he just walk it up and punch the living hell out of someone. <laughs> Uh, so it looks like if you're targeting units that are um, 10 to 12, you're getting a 17 value from the Seltkirk. Uh, if you guys want to look at this, uh, look at this chart. We can link that in the description of the show. But uh, it, it looks like you get the most value um, if you're targeting something 10 to 12. You get 17 points. It's pretty decent for a gold card. Uh, if you target something that's seven, you're only getting fourteen. But again, you have that removal effect, kind of. You can you can use it on an engine, uh, something like that. So it you know he seems like pretty decent value for a gold. Nothing spectacular. Uh, probably more of a tech card. I mean, what what do you think about that, Gwent Town? So I'm guessing then the retaliation damage is not done to Salkirk, right? Because if not, there's some that doesn't really. Uh... Yeah, maybe like I, I maybe I have that one wrong. Uh, if it is like that, 17, 18 points with the possibility of removal, it looks really strong to me. It looks uh, usable at least. Uh, now, on the other hand, uh, right now at least, uh, Northern Realms definitely has like really three strong, very or like very strong golds. Where's my grammar? Uh, and then this could really fit nicely for the fourth gold spot. We will just see because there are gonna be a lot of cards released. But yeah. Looks strong, like what, and whenever I see like removal with high points, uh, some kind of versatility too, because you can do a little bit of both. It looks like a like a useful card to me. It will probably maybe not make the cut, but I think it may be in a good meta for it. You could definitely see it being run. So yeah, thumbs up. If it is 17 points, 18 points, thumbs up for me. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Here we've got the Skellige Gold card. It is. Him, uh, two points, cursed unit, uh, some really sick artwork. Uh, choose one, play a cursed unit from your deck, 
or spawn a silver unit from your opponent's deck. So again, uh, I don't mind the spawn so much on this one because you're only getting six choices. Uh, you're pulling it from your opponent's deck if you're you know, a competitive player, if you're in tune with what's kind of popular in the meta. You can kind of you know, ex expect what you might get from this. And uh, it's, it's again, it's more of a risk for you because you have to play it while they still have some silvers in their deck. Um, so, you know, I'm not, I'm not too down on the spawn on this one. I kind of like it here. Um, what are your guys' thoughts on this? Uh, let's kick it off with Panty. How do you, how do you feel about this guy? Oh, dude, I think that there is a lot of options. For example, we spoke about Darren. I think he's a course unit as well. Uh, we spoke, we've seen other course units as well. Uh, we've seen like spies. Uh, I, I I like that there is an option, right? That just you're on simply on your opponent's deck, and then there is an option to don't take that and spawn a silver unit of your uh, what's it called what is it, play cards unit from your deck. So mm -hmm. I like that. I like that versatility. And obviously, we haven't seen all the cards that are going to be available by then. So I would like to reserve my ideas towards once they have released all that. Because, you know, it's too strong, so they must value it really, really hard. What do you think, Went to Town? Do you think that uh, two strength evaluation is good, or, or do you think it's a little off there? I think this card looks really strong. From very strong to broken, we'll see how it works out. To me, this just looks like a, a budget version of Rain Farm for Skelly. Because you can choose between playing your spy or playing your opponent's spy, which is even more broken. Uh, definitely, if you can pull it off, playing your opponent's spy, this card could, could like win you the game on the spot if the spy is actually worth it. Getting also three choices from your opponent is like very good. You can hit all their choices basically, because there is going to be like the, normally decks play good cards in them. Uh, I, I tend to I tend to agree to that. You so. underestimate me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, in, a, in an ideal situation in which your opponent uh, uses uh, his mind to think about what he puts in the deck, uh, or at least has someone that actually thought about it first before he copied them, the cards that should be on the deck are going to normally be good value. So you could find something interesting there, or you could just spawn a course unit from your deck, which is also going to be interesting. Uh, it's also going to be interesting to see if uh, people are going to try to do like some kind of... Uh, spy tempo play with it like only try to play it um, with very few cures units like uh, trying to play like marching orders into skial into like for example if you only run skial and spy you could do marching or uh, rail decree sorry play this play skial and spy or just play this normally from your hand with uh, skial and spy so that would be between 9 and 7 points plus um the minus 12 from with Alric. So that would be pretty strong and tempo play when going second uh, because uh, the card advantage obviously is important. If it plays your opponent's spy, it's even more broken because you have the option for two spies, which bleeding is basically game winning. So this card uh, is a strong. <laughs> it looks very strong to me, at least. And uh, we'll see. Uh, but definitely with cards like Darren being added and to the course pool, it just looks like a very strong card. I don't know. Not anything else to say. The versatility looks good and looks like a kind of a different guild, even very more broken. So, yeah. Yeah, it looks like there are a ton of great uh, cursed units being added to the pool. Uh, what do you think about that, Double Driven? I mean, uh, we just keep seeing more and more great cursed units uh, getting added. What do you think about that archetype as a whole with this card? I, I just like it because. Like when you're playing Nilfgaard, they save their Joachim most of the time as their finisher. So you play this, you steal their Joachim, and then you play like Jenga for like a boatload of points, and then they just play their, you know, Nausicaa Brigade or whatever, and you're just like, thanks, man. <laughs> thanks for stacking your deck for me. So, yeah, so. It, uh, it doesn't really steal, sorry. I don't know if. Uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't steal it, but, but it, you, you're able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it at least you're always getting yeah. something good i think you know rarely are yeah. people putting bad cards in their deck yeah unless you play me and then you're getting a molina you're just gonna feel bad <laughs> <laughs> so there you go boys play this card only if you're uh, not playing manti or devil on the ladder you know <laughs> if you see those guys I mean, you can still play your units. yeah you can still play your course units 
So yeah, it's never that, bad. That's what's cool about these cards is they're they're introducing a lot of choice to the game, which I really like. Uh, you know, kind of the more choices you have, the more opportunity you have as a skilled player to kind of you know make better decisions and and kind of give you that edge over other players. Um, so I definitely like that that they're putting into the game. Uh, moving on here, the last faction gold card we have is the Letho Kingslayer here. Uh, nice little piece of lore for anyone who's played the Witcher games. Uh, he is a 4 point gold, 4 Nilfgaard, reads choose 1, destroy an enemy leader on the board and set self to 11, or play a bronze or silver tactic from your deck. So, I mean, Gwent Town was saying John Natalis is busted. I mean, this is just John Natalis for Nilfgaard, man. How do you feel about that, Gwent Town? It looks like a weak Oriana Talis, but yeah, interesting. You also just need to wait. See if they are actually bringing like tactics and uh, silver tactics for Nilfgaard. That would be really strong. That happens. If not, I don't know. It, it could be. I mean, there's also de decent tactics uh, in general for neutral, but they are they'll pair in comparison to cards like reinforcement, right? Marching orders is always there, obviously. Uh, Commander's horn is also always there, obviously. But uh, if we see some more neutral op or like some more Nilfgaard options for the tactics, then yeah, this card is going to be thumbs up. The second effect is rarely going to come into play. If we see a meta in which um, Elder is going to get huge, like for example, uh, in type of greedy consume list that you have to eat big stuff with the, with the Elder, then this card counters Elder too. So it's interesting. Um, looks like a, de like a decent card. It's also very good that you have um, like a fallback plan if the tactic part is that. So yeah, it looks like a strong card. We'll see what the tactics they add to the game. But definitely looks competitive to me at first glance, yeah. What do you think, Devil? How do you feel about the uh, the Kingslayer Letho here? Yeah, he, he hit the nail on the head. You, you play this against Unseen and he's going to have to think about what he... He's not going to want to eat those Neckers and stuff because... The minute he does and gets big, you know, it's like a 40-point swing. <laughs> it's, it might even be a concede. You know, you might just see somebody concede because they just... Um, I, I think, though, that you got we got to get more tactics cards for that to come into play. What do you think, Manti? Do you think uh, we need more tactics, or do you think there's enough out there to uh, give Leto some decent value? I think Leto gets decent value regardless. It's... Uh... Four plus actually it would be like a silver value if he could pay us both to eleven and it gets a four. But overall, I I would like to see more silver tactics. Who wouldn't like to see more cards like that, you know? And once that happens, then we can st start adding value to the Kingslayer. It's uh, I think that also seeing what other leaders there will be because you know they they've talked about. Yeah, there being more theaters, so I would also like to see their strength, and maybe, you know, who knows? Maybe there is a super strong leader. Yeah, I think, uh, in general, he maybe is not as flexible as he seems. I mean, his one option, destroying the leader, is pretty good, but uh, you got to remember that there's only one leader card in any given deck, so if you miss your opportunity or, or you're not waiting on that, then you're pretty much running him as a, a one option card. Um, as for his second ability, I think, yeah, pulling tactic cards are great from the deck. You get the thinning, you get the powerful silver, um, but there, there are a bit less, uh, neutral options for Nilfgaard, uh, compared to, to, uh, you know, how Northern Realms has their reinforcements and things like that. So I'm sure they'll be introducing some tactic cards to, uh, the Nilfgaard pool, hopefully something cool there. Uh, and if we do see that, I think Letho could be a pretty decent choice. Uh, depending on what sorts of leaders are popular out there, you know, if, if Hensaults are popular, then, you know, you're you're playing his one ability as what a 13 point gold, you know, nothing too impressive, but it is nice to have that as the fallback. Um, but yeah, anyway, moving on here, we've got another one of the more controversial cards from the set, and that is a uh, Geralt Yarden now. This is a 5-point gold. I know it says 10 on the screen, but they've actually uh, recently kind of changed that number because uh, this card would be insane as 10. But 5-point gold, it reads, reset all units and remove their tokens. Uh, Devil and I were kind of chatting before the, the stream about this that, man, this ability looks strong, Devil. I mean, what do you, what do you see about this one, the possibilities? 
Yeah, I mean it. It it's just it it just seems too good to be true. You just read it, and in a, in a long round, you go up against like Hensel. He plays all his PFIs and Germains and stuff. <laughs> if he's lucky at the end of the turn, he's got like forty points. I mean, this thing it 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 counters um, Woodland Spirit. All those tokens are gone. It's and you play it in Skellige, and if you're playing stuff that got damaged in the weather or Ragnarug, you just throw it out there, and everything's back to where it was. It's, it's, it seems crazy, man. It, it it's definitely going to be the first card I craft. Yeah, even playing this against like Spell uh, Skelltail, I mean, they throw down three or four big protectors, and you just toss this guy out, and now they got a bunch of two strength weenies on the board. Uh, I mean, Gwent Town, how do you feel about this? Do you think that the meta is going to be right for Yarden to get this kind of insane value that it potentially has? Or do you think that this card will kind of cause these decks like Spell ST and maybe token-based uh, monsters decks to kind of fade away? What, what do you see happening with this guy? I don't know. Obviously, this type of card is... I'm just going to open, by the way, every every card analysis by saying I don't know. It's just <laughs> uh, today's thing. Uh, but... Regardless, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this card is probably gonna be very meta dependent. As of now, as a vibe, I think it's very overestimated. But many people, I think it's gonna be pro probably be much worse than people realize, or I, I think it right now. I pr I think it's probably gonna be maybe ranking SK because SK just has natural synergy with the resetting and um, they are normally very high value in terms of uh, natural strength already. But obviously this hits your board too if you are playing a, a deck that already boost, uh, boosts the units and it doesn't work. If you're playing against a deck that doesn't boost the units, it really doesn't work that well. Playing a 5 point gold is super punishing in a, lo in a short round. It's game losing base. It's like an Igni that doesn't hit, you lose the game. It's like having a dead card. So I can see here than winning games. I can definitely see it than losing games. Uh, so yeah, he's kind of like uh, the his brother, his brother Igni. is like he, a very a very swingy card sometimes, but also kind of play around the ball uh, to some extent. So yeah, we'll see. Even can definitely bully some decks, as you said before, though. Will you? I definitely think it it will be strong in terms of countering, but I don't know if ready for. Another player for the normal meta after the patch hits is going to be that uh, that way. Yeah, I, I like that point how it's kind of like uh, Igni is maybe the swing card to punish, you know, tall units where this guy kind of, it's the same sort of uh, concept, a very swingy card, but you're punishing, you know, kind of wide strategies, something that you're investing a lot of tokens or, or buffing a lot of units. Uh, how do you feel about that, Manti? What do, what do you see potential for this card? I see the potential of failing. Like, uh, let's be realistic. Let's talk about the meta, right? Uh, meta takes into consideration what's going to be countered. And once there is something like this, it's just going to stop high roll decks from happening. It's just going to keep, like, the meta more balanced without actually being on the deck. Because people are going to start playing around this, and then eventually people are going to take it off the decks. And then still, people won't want to risk playing against a deck that has Carol Jordan. Uh, overall, people is, is going to come down to the people adapting properly to this card. I just I just wanted to add one more thing, man. So far with the the Gerald like special cards like Igni and Ard, both of them have been nerfed <laughs> at some point in time. They were yeah. completely broken, so it, I'm, I'm just predicting that uh, this one's going to be no no different. It's it's going to have a it's going to come out and it's going to be crazy and it's going to get toned down. I mean, hell, this guy got nerfed even before it came out, right? They showed it on the dev stream as a <laughs> as a ten, and now if you go to the uh, the card reveal website, he's in there as a five. So maybe they saw it coming this time. <laughs> I mean, ob obviously, as a ten, everything here changes. Like five points is like if I say, oh, it's, if a striker was a twelve that dealt thirty damage, then it would be a good card. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but as as of now, with the numbers we see here, if your thing is like at five, 
Nah, I don't think it's gonna be. It's it's gonna be good in long runs probably because it's just kind of inevitable that it's gonna get some decent value, like at least 15, 12, uh, something. But yeah. uh, against against weak decks, that, uh, like against decks that are weak and uh, that he is weak weak against, is gonna be super tough to get any, to get any kind of value. I'm playing without playing without a gold is really hard in competitive level. Also, you have to take into account that there is some type of text that really think a lot and have to play every card every game. That makes your them being dead mm -hmm. super bad. Uh, then there's the text that boosts the cards, which you can also not play yet. Uh, again, you, you could definitely could find a, a niche on Skellige or you can find a niche on other decks, but I don't think we're going to be complaining much about here then. Maybe they put it back to 10, though. <laughs> so, <laughs> who knows? Who knows what's going to happen, but yeah. Irden as, as a 5, it doesn't really strike me as a broken card right now. We'll see how the meta adapts, though. I think my, my biggest fear with this card mostly is just, you know, if it becomes, or if it is really good, then it might even stifle diversity out there in the meta. I mean, you know, this this card pretty much bullies a lot of decks out there. I mean, you if you run Spell ST, you've got tons of units that are, are buffed up. If you run even Consume, you know, that deck, all its units are getting buffed from the Consuming and, and things like that. Um, you know, even something like Axeman, where, you know, you can you can reset the Axeman down to base and, and heal all your guys. So, I mean, if Geralt Yarden, if he gets widespread, you know, these decks can kind of really, their play rates can get really reduced down to nothing. And, you know, that's that's a little concern I have, is maybe this card will stifle some diversity in the meta. But, I mean, again, it's all, it's all a meta tech, you know, as this card will kind of be played less and less as people stop playing those decks then all of a sudden those decks will kind of come back to resurgence. So it, it's very tough to make those meta calls before uh, it happens. But certainly an interesting card, very cool effect. Uh, we'll have to see how it plays out. Um, but here we are, boys, the last card in the set to be revealed, the last gold neutral, and this one is a doozy. I, I'm ready for this. It is I got this. <laughs> Saskia Dragonfire, uh, Draconid, 8-point gold neutral. Banish your hand and draw that many cards. Manti, you got it. Let's hear your thoughts. Okay, let me tell you something, dude. In tournament <laughs> play, you're going to see every single idea list member playing it, all right? Because <laughs> after every tournament, we speak about, like, how was your hand and everything, and they're like, dude, my hand was garbage. You know what? Now we have the option of Saskia. Your hand is garbage. Boom! Saskia, give me a better hand. <laughs> no, I actually, like, obviously that's a joke, but... Uh, I'm not so sure how this card is going to be affecting it. I, don't, I actually don't think anybody's going to be risking banishing an entire hand. Like, what? Uh, there has to be something hidden here. There has to be something with the next card that are going to be revealed in order for Dragon Saskia to be a thing. There is no reason for the CPPR to release a card like this without absolutely no synergy. So be on the lookout for the following cards, you know? Because I think that that's what's going to make Dragon Saskia, uh, uh, Saskia Dragonfire a thing, or my not making a thing. What do you, what do you um, think? Go ahead, Gwentstown. How, how you feel? I'm, not, I'm just thinking about the hilarious possibility. Sorry, I need to say, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm just thinking about the <laughs> hilarious possibility of every, of every, of like, uh, people play Mulligan and. Um, and Dragon Saskia, and instead of Mulligan in the Vatican, out of their hand, they Mulligan the good ones, <laughs> so they can get the Saskia for the good cards. I don't know. It's kind of a really interesting card. I see it uh, right now. I say, look at it. It looks like extremely bad. Because it's probably going to be super hard to find a situation in which Dragon Saskia is actually good. Uh, because if, even if your hand is clunky, just banishing cards and drain more. Will probably not help uh, because when the problem with uh, a clunky hand is normally you have some tools and you need another tool to make that tool work. If you just throw the tool you have and get another tool that you already needed, but you needed the tool you already throw, it, it doesn't really work. I think for a lot of decks, right? Uh, so it's just gonna be interesting. Like if there's a deck that can use this to the full potential, I can see this card being broken as hell. Or if you could like uh, use it in a way that is uh, broken, it doesn't really discard. It punishes, so they don't really go to the graveyard either. It's interesting. I don't know. 
to to me right now this card doesn't look strong. Uh, looks like a fun card though. Uh, or I don't know, maybe ar arena and like arena type of uh, mode where you just have to run bad cards or so and you just throw them. I don't know. <laughs> Could be interesting. It's good for bleeding though if you had bad cards, but not really much else I see in this card. I think it's not good. What do you think, Devil Driven? What kind of memes are you looking to pull off with this card yeah. here? So so far, the best one I heard is you know just stacking your deck with a whole bunch of you know alchemy cards, you know crow's eye and whatnot, and then using the viper school witchers but you want to you just fill your hand with all the junk on the beginning and you have dragon fire saskia and you pitch all that stuff and get the good cards but i if it, i i i would see more to it if it wasn't neutral like if it was like maybe a monster card or a skeleton card maybe there might be cards where say you know like maybe they were like golems where if you banished a card you know pull one out of your deck or something like that you know, if you banish X amount of cards, this unit gets X amount of strength or something like that. But the way it is right now, it's just, it, it it's it's just, it's like hanging yourself to me. Like, I, I mean, yeah, you could, like he's like went to town said, it, it's like, well, you you can't build a deck wall here. <laughs> you know, just try again. You know, but the way it is right now, I I just I wouldn't play it. I mean, I'm I'm I'll try to figure out a way to you know make a highlight out of it but it just seems like it's it it's just not very good at all 200 but scraps <laughs> i mean the only niche case i could see is maybe you hold on to it you know at the end of a round and you've got this card and maybe you've kind of mulligan badly so you have kind of two or three duds in your hand and you just kind of re-roll those but even that you know it's super risky and you're playing an eight point gold for that you know it, if you mulligan bad, you know, is that is playing an eight point gold gonna make up for, you know, re rolling that hand that maybe you have a couple duds in there? Uh, I'm not I'm not too sure about that, but it seems like a really niche card and again it doesn't really fit into anything. Maybe it's released for something down the line. Um, I like that idea of a banishing synergy, that's pretty cool. And it's something that's not really explored in the game yet, but as of now, yeah, two hundred scraps. I get, I agree. <laughs> I don't know. I I just wanna um, I think suggest that they change the name to, of this card to Sansa's This is uh, Dragonfire. That <laughs> that would be much easier to read and also to commentate. Uh, <laughs> I've got yeah, a name. I, it's a uh, Saskia Dumpster Fire. How about that? <laughs> oh, that you're you're <laughs> there so it is, dude. <laughs> That's it. <so. laughs> the the absolute the absolute lord right there. And um, by the way, uh, I don't know if you guys somehow uh, talked about the card when I was away, but did you guys talk about the Chrome? We was incarnate? Ah, yeah, yeah. It somehow? No, you know what? That's actually my fault for skipping that. Let's go back and God, uh, look, did look at that one. Back? He's like, teacher, you forgot to give us your homework. <laughs> God damn it, went to town. God damn. <laughs> Alright, let's, think... let's take a look at that one right now. Let me pull it up I'm on sorry. the screen. I'm, I'm damn, sorry. We're, I... bringing him, dude. we're bringing him at lunch. I'm sorry, I actually think that card is, is good, so I, I want to talk about it. I want to see what you guys think about it. So here we go, just for all the audio listeners, we've got Weavis Incantation, 4-point Monster Gold, Relic Mage as well. Uh, choose one ability, strengthen all allied relics by 2, or play a bronze or silver relic from your deck and strengthen it by 2. Uh, it seems to me like it's kind of like Rain Farm for monsters, uh, just pulling a relic from your deck and, and buffing it. But what's town? You want to talk about it, man? What what do you think about this one? You're saying it's pretty good, huh? I don't know. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm just joking at this point. <laughs> now, now for now for real. Uh, I think if if they print this in relics, this card is gonna be absolutely good. Yeah. Just imagine, compare it, right? So this card, if you play relics, is like a double fault test. Like the effect is twice as good as fault test. They're also strengthened, not boosted, so if you somehow revive it, it's, it's still good, like it gets the points back. Uh, if you are going to play fiends, which are kind of weak, but you know, imagine their fiends were good or get buffed or whatever, uh, they're already big on the graveyard. And then you play ghouls, they're super big, like imagine they are like 13, 14, 15 points type of fiend, uh, it's going to be insane. 
Uh, I think it's, it's, this card is definitely good. If the if the relics are good, I can see you running. The the good thing about monsters too. Sorry that I'm just throwing seven points at a time. Uh, is that they have guilds, they have a decree, so they can fight in goals like as they want. So they could I could definitely see monsters playing this card with renew. Gives renew this card and another gold. Uh, it could be a very very strong combination to get two effects of this uh, super soon, or just play one for the points and. Uh, for the carry over, if you say, and then play one as a finisher with a strong relic, just to f to finish it off, and you have this, that strike is hitting the gym, you know, just to say, gets to seven, then to nine, is just shooting down, you know. I don't know. Uh, if if the if the relics are good, this card is definitely gonna see play. I think. We be seeing card. It's also like versatile and shit. This, I I think the the card is de is decent for sure. What do you think about that devil? You, th you think you see the potential in this card? Yeah, it it adds uh, it adds another uh, you know wrinkle to the Toad Prince Manticore ghoul combo with the the monsters nest, and then you know maybe if if the relics get some kind of like I mean right now all the relics are really like big bulky things you know what I mean maybe they get some type of you know like a heart a Sueno harpy where it's like a swarm tactic to where you can maybe play it like a, like he said a full test where you got a bunch of them on the board and you can you know get some serious you know like yennefer power out of it with it that'd be great but the way i look at it right now is it's it's, it's adding to that that combo with you know the the toad prince and the manicore and the monster's nest but if they get something little that you can pop out that'd be great too by the way, I just want to remind uh, people that, that lesser demons, a card that caused me, uh, my Discord to crash, is, is a relic too, and it moves a unit. Like, that effect is broken as hell. Move a unit to your hand, that is super good. The problem is the discarding. Uh, so if you have like a card that you want to get every game, like Weavis Incarnate, and also makes your rakes stronger, I could definitely see that synergy working, and it's gonna help you get that weapon every time. The, the the hilarious thing would be if you move it to your hand and then you discard it with the absol uh, absolutely beautiful randomness that is card games sometimes. <laughs> so then you just play a nine and lost your best card, uh, which is bad. But it's in, I mean, as I'm gonna say, by for every card is interesting. I think weapons is strong. We'll see if they. By the way, sorry. Crawls are also relics, right? That would be a little bit good. Finishing with yeah, crawls yeah. busted by two every copy. Yeah, I think they are relics. Uh, Caretaker is a relic as well. Um, seems, oh, 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 seems good. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me dirty like that. <laughs> it's, here, dude. It's, this is where you see that that Bruce, uh with the big old bucket head start doing some boom chick a wow wow. baby, you, you looking you thick. <laughs> I mean, Manti, uh, the the lesser demons is a card you rated as uh, fifty scraps, if I do recall correctly. Uh, I mean, that's one of the kind of worst relics out there. Again, there's a ton of great relics out there that. Aren't even played because they're relics. Like caretaker, you just play that because that's an all-around good card. But uh, what do you, what do you think about the relic synergy? Is that something that you think will make a strong archetype uh, in this upcoming patch, or is it something that you think still needs a few more cards added? Okay, so I was trying to do a meme deck. Obviously, right now we just speaking right now. It's uh, the problem with relics is that you don't have deck thinning. The problem with the relics is that uh, you know they have big bodies and they're easily to remove. Um, you know, ironically, a big body is actually easy to remove and when. And the problem with this is actually we're not talking about the problem. We're talking about the card itself. The card itself, I think, is really, really good because once again, it's not it's strengthened, it's not boost, and strengthened is always better than boost, in my opinion. I don't see a scenario where it's not. And not just that, but you also have the synergy to hit like a big unit. And then just use that effect right away. Uh, I like that the card were all. I think that uh, relics only need a little bit of love in order to make it a thing. And perhaps, you know, who knows? Maybe we see the other two gold crowns, you know? And that from their own, it goes out of hand. We'll see. 
All right, yeah, certainly uh, I, potential here, uh, but again, it depends on those relics. I'm just I'm just checking it out. Morbid is also a relic. I think Frightener is also a relic. If Frightener is a relic, that is strong, by the way. Because you can pull it right out from your deck with this. Hmm. Yeah, that synergy. That could be pretty good. Uh, it is a downside. You are strengthening it, so you're still paying almost full cost for that spy, but. Even just having access to it, I think it's pretty good. No, Frinder is a construct, with I ha which I have absolutely no idea what that actually means, but, you know, it's a construct. How is that like a construct, dude? What does you want? It's right there! <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a building, I guess. You know? Yeah, yeah. 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 if it's a construct, too. A lot of tags to keep track of, man, honestly. And they're just adding more and more. <laughs> Pretty soon you're going to need a damn encyclopedia playing this game, you know, who's a relic? Who's a construct? Look it up real quick in the middle of your games. Yeah, no, you have to look at Necrod if that thing is a, is a relic or a Baya. I think a Baya is just a Necrophage. Hmm, yeah. I don't <laughs> even think she's a mage either, right? Yeah, I, for some reason, I don't know. Some... <laughs> What I do is just I just look at the card and I I, I see the tags and I'm like okay if if you say so you know it's like that patch where the where I knew was an elf but Francesca wasn't an elf or something like that and Francesca like I knew wasn't a mage it was super weird oh, like yeah. all the tags are yeah you know what I mean right I'm I'm mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. Poor, poor Drow, though, sitting here with this Spectre tag that, that no one can use. <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> oh, man. So I think that uh, wraps it up for all the cards. If I didn't forget any, uh, man, this has been a long podcast. We were actually trying to keep it to one hour, but, man, all these cards are awesome, and there's a lot to say about it. So thank you guys for uh, hanging out. If you made it this far into the podcast, we really appreciate it. Um, real quick before we end, uh, we'll just go around and do uh, some shout outs. So if you guys want to plug your, your Twitters, your, your streaming, your content creation, uh, go ahead and let us know. Uh, you can find me streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv slash shootplays, or hit me up on Twitter at shootplays. Uh, Manty Man, what do you got going on as the, the granddaddy of the, uh, the Gwent City team? What do you got going on there? So, first of all, if you make it this far, what's wrong with you, man? <laughs> I, I do something, <laughs> do something better. You know what I'm playing. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. You know, we always try to bring uh, some kind of uh, content, some try, some kind of like insight into the game, and I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, we work hard into this. I know that you know sometimes we have a lot, a couple of technical difficulties, but we have a lot of heart. Just thank you so much for watching, and you know, hit the sub button. Went to town, man. Where can people find you? They can find me on my Twitter if I ever log, <laughs> log into it, I guess. <laughs> no, now for real. Uh, yeah, they can find me in Twitter. Uh, they can also find me in Twitch. Um, they can shoot me messages there. Whatever. I check it out actually pretty daily. And they can also hit me up on GOG or Discord if they want. I'm basically just there for the community, but I don't really do like much of uh, just, you know, day by day handling that if someone actually wants something for me i'm super glad to help and that's also part of the um, why i do these talk shows with you guys or podcasts whatever you want to call it but to give a little bit back to the community and let's have a good time overall which is, i think we we did have a pretty decent time uh, today just uh, normally like car reveals and this type of stuff is like really funny also we all get to speculate and you know fantasize a little bit with it so yeah, it was overall a pretty, a pretty good stream. I'm just going to let Devil Durbin do his shoutouts now. Uh, you can find me, uh, just type in Devil Driven on YouTube. Uh, I, I put out a video. Uh, I, I usually put about five videos up a week. Um, Manny helps me out with that sometimes, too. We uh, we have some ups and downs with our, our video content. <laughs> and uh, If we're doing shoutouts, man, I just want to shout out Mr. Pavel Berja, man. He's been streaming all this week, man. Seeing the community manager, you know, streaming and having fun and playing some games for everyone to see, I think that's great. So shout out to him, man. Definitely check out his uh, his his Twitch to uh, watch him play some ale dwarf <laughs> shenanigans. 
Yeah, Berger is definitely a good guy, and, and he does a great job with, uh, you know, really being a part of the community, not just uh, kind of this, as other companies do, this guy, you know, giving the info. He's he's really in it, and uh, I think we love him for that, and and uh, really appreciate that from him. Um, real quick on the Should announcements, uh, sorry, you wanted to ask something? Yeah, I just want. I just wanted to say, show if you're uh, held hostage, wink, wink twice, <laughs> just so we know. <laughs> no, I, I love those guys, man. I love them. <laughs> it's just a joke. Go ahead. I know. Ber Berger can tie me up in leaks any day, man. I'd, I'd be, I'd happily take that. Um, but real quick, <laughs> just some announcements. <laughs> but real quick, just some announcements before we go. Uh, audio only version is up now. We are on SoundCloud. Uh, I am still trying to work on iTunes for that. It's a little bit more complicated there, as I don't really use iTunes that much. But be on the lookout for that. We'll have that in the description. Um, also, starting next week, we're going to start uh, introducing uh, guests into the show. So uh, we have a really special one planned for next week. Uh, that's going to be a cool episode. We will do that announcement later in the week. But uh, try and see if you guys can guess who it is. I'm, I'm sure uh, you guys will have lots of good ideas. And if there's anyone that you'd like to see part in the show... Uh, just let us know. I have a list of guys that I'm trying to get on, and as we work through that, we'll we'll get to uh, some of your suggestions. But uh, yeah, Manti, do you have any other uh, announcements for the team? Anything going on that people should be aware of? No, I'm <laughs> pretty dead weak. <laughs> pretty dead weak. Uh, no, that's it. I'm just being honest. I just want to point out that on the camera, it started with the most light, and I'm just slowly being devoured by the shadows. <laughs> I'm going to the shadow realm, dude. <laughs> I, we played the 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 can of vine or whatever uh, spell yeah. on you. <laughs> yeah. The, the yeah. Cadaverine Venom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it, and we will see you back next week with the Grand Master Plan. Have a good week, everyone.